So in the previous video, we upgraded the firmware on the vidi v1 to the vidi v2 type firmware, and now we're going to go ahead and make the USB cable so that we can download files. So here's the USB cable that I created myself, and what this does is it plugs in right here on the vidi camera. Now ideally, I should have a 7-pin Molex connector for this, uh, but I didn't have one. All I had around was 6-pin connectors, so what I'm doing is just make sure the 5-volt wire, the red wire, is plugged on the top, on this side up here, towards the top, and there's one pin that isn't being used down here. So just four wires, that's all we got. And where did I get this cable? Well, I just happened to have a, a cable like this that came with one of the power modules that I usually have. So this is the power modules that I bought. They're APM power modules. Uh, they can come from various companies. But that's one place you can get these cables, the cables that go to these current voltage sensing power mod modules. And you just uh, unplug the cable here and you end up with this. And then you can just cut this off and then you'll have a connector that will fit. Let me get the other end because that's the end we want. Fit in here. I could have used this end but then the red wire would be in the wrong place if I plugged it in like this. Then the red wire would be down here which isn't color-coded very good. I'd rather have the 5 volt wire be red and plug on at the top up here. So that's how it goes. Now if you can come up with a 7 pin one that would be even better. Because this is a 7 pin Molex socket. It's called a Pico blade and I think it's a 1.25 millimeter pitch. Uh, you can order these sockets from Molex. I haven't found out where to order the wires though the pins that plug into them. They can be removed by just taking a, a needle and lifting these tabs and pulling them out. So if you want to switch them around you can do that. Okay, but ideally what we want to do is go from this to a socket. Now this can be either a micro or mini. Just depends on what kind of cables you have lay, laying around. I happen to have a lot of the, uh, the minis that look like this. So I just want to be able to plug a mini into here, like that, plug it into the uh, bid eye, and then plug the other end into the computer. Now if you look at the end of the cable here, right here, make sure I got it up there, I got to orientate it like that. So if you look at the end of the cable here, you will see that this is represented by that. So you see how it's set right there? So this little piece of plastic is at the bottom right here and then the pins are on top of that. Pin 1 is right here. Then pin 2, pin 3, and pin 4. And that's what I have down here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now Going over to the bid eye camera, you take pin 1, this is all we want to do, just run pin 1, and it has to end up on pin 1 on the bid eye. And pin 1 on the bid eye is right up at the top here, right there. That's pin 1, and it goes 1 through 7, 7's at the bottom right here. This is the bottom of the camera, by the way, because there's the microphone. It always goes on the bottom. This is the top of the camera. So, yeah, that's pin 1. Pin 7's down here. So, we just want to go pin 1 to pin 1, pin 2 to pin 2, pin 3 to pin 3, and then the last one, which is the ground, pin 4, actually goes to 5. So, you skip a pin right there. Get yourself an extension cable like this. Can be a micro or a mini. Can be any length. Doesn't matter. I just happen to have a short one. Cut it in half. Skin off the insulation. And then you'll have something that looks like this with four wires coming out of it. 
Now I don't know if the color coding is the same on all of these, but I wrote it on the chart anyway. Pin 1 is red, pin 2 is white, pin 3 is green, and pin 4 is black. But I don't know if they're all like that. I just happen to know that mine was that way. Now if you don't want to make a short one like this, you could just take the cable like this and go straight to that. Just just cut this end, cut this end off, and then solder that on these four wires. But whatever you do, you just have to have it come out so that pins uh, one, two, three, four here go to one, two, three, five here, and you're all set. You might have to use a meter to ohm it out and make sure they're correct. But if you just follow the schematic, that I have right here it should work so there you go right there you can just grab a frame off this video or I'll put a link to this document under the video later but there there's the colors of the wires if they're like that I don't know if all cables are like that but if they're not you can still just ohm out pin 1 to pin 1 and so forth make sure they're in this order right here so that's really all there is to it I'm not going to show the soldering procedure and all that because I'm not teaching soldering, but it's very simple. You just uh, solder these wires together, and I just happen to make sure first that the red wire was going to the red wire on here. So I got red to red right there. And then I've got uh, the black, this black wire here, which is the fifth pin make sure that goes to the black wire here. Get those two right, at least you won't fry it. Or fry your computer if you got the ground and voltage right. So those two right there, pin 1 and pin 5 on here, is red and black on here. And then you just have to worry about the lines here that uh, transmit the data. And they're not too bad, the data lines, white and green, go into the uh, pins 2 and 3 on here. And you can just see that on the schematic right there. So 2 and 3. And like I said, 2 goes to 2 and 3 goes to 3. How hard can that be? So there you go. Very simple. And then you just plug this in here. Make sure you get the red wire at the top. Plug the other end into your USB cable, so the extension goes to the USB cable, the other end goes into your computer, and this cable here will actually power the, the camera off your computer, and then you can just download the files. I'll show you how to do that. Let's see. Okay, so there's the file dialog that just popped up. And uh, you can see in here we've got all the files and folders that are on the SD card on the camera. So if I go in the video folder, there are the files that I just recorded. Just a word of caution, the company schematic shows no 5 volts going to pin 1 on the bid eye right here. Uh, that might be because if you have your bid eye plugged into your aircraft, you may already have a voltage on that pin. And so what they're saying is maybe you should just have a USB cable that has the two data pins in ground only and then power it the regular way you do when you're in flight which is on another pin on there so maybe that's a just a safety precaution but if you don't have the camera plugged into your plane you can definitely hook up 5 volts on here straight to the USB cable as I showed you and probably get away with it just fine I am Okay, now another subject is there is a voltage detect cable with the V2, the bit IV2, that you don't have with the V1, and that's right here. And all it is is basically a four cell balance plug right here with two wires running to another Molex connector. And I'll show you how that plugs on. So that plugs in right here, 
like that and if you have this on your battery when your uh, voltage gets low say you have it set to 3.6 volts in your configuration for the camera it'll come up and show uh, low voltage on the screen like this and indicate that the uh, the battery is getting low and that you need to land so that might be a handy thing to have and the way you make that is right here on the schematic you use your balance plug you'd have to get a balance socket from somewhere to plug on the, ba the battery and then just connect two wires together so uh, five on here is going to five on this connector and four on here is going to pin four on that connector so so basically it's four to four and five to five they both have five pins and so they just go straight across so that's simple enough you just have to come up with a five pin molex connector somewhere of course you could probably get away with a with a three or four pin just make sure it's plugged in the right two pins so that's it for this video and uh, you can make your cables now and upgrade your V1 to a V2 with the firmware and you're all set. Keep your light.